Now, the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine rests very heavily on the idea that the Jews are God's chosen people and that the nation of Israel is under the blessing of God. And if I could just get you to understand that the nation of Israel, so-called, is not under God's blessing and that they are not God's chosen people, I think you'll have no trouble at all realizing that the rapture comes after the tribulation just by a simple reading of Matthew 24 and Mark 13. But let me prove to you that uh, the so-called nation of Israel is not the people of God and, and that they are not the elect, they are not his chosen people, uh, they are not under his blessing, but they're under his wrath. We could turn to many places, but I think Ephesians 2 says it best. The Bible reads in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Listen to verse 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So that right there tells us in Ephesians chapter 2 that we were in time past Gentiles according to the flesh. That means that we are no longer Gentiles in God's eyes. The Bible says we were in time past aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. But he says now in verse 19, now therefore you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So the Bible very clearly tells in Ephesians 2 that if we're saved, we are citizens of Israel. We are not foreigners. We're not aliens. We're not strangers. We're not Gentiles. We're citizens of Israel. The Bible says in Romans 2, for, ye, for he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, verse 28, neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart and of the spirit, not of the letter, which, whose praise is not of men but of God. So the Bible tells us really clearly that he's not a Jew which is one outwardly. Just because someone looks like a Jew or claims to be descended from Abraham or claims to be descended from Israel, that doesn't make them a Jew. The Bible says a true Jew is the one who's a true in, Jew inwardly. That's why it said in Esther that many of the people became Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell upon them. Well, if you can become a Jew, then obviously that is something that has to do with your heart, not just with your physical lineage. That's why the Bible said, Think not to say within yourselves we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. You say, well, I still think that the Jews are God's people. I still think that the nation of Israel is God's people. Well, the Bible flat out told you in Romans 2, 28 and 29, that he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. And the Bible flat out told you in Ephesians 2 that we as Gentiles are citizens of Israel. Now, just think about it for a moment. Throughout the Old Testament, did God allow the children of Israel to live in the promised land when they were in unbelief? No. If you remember, when they didn't believe God, they were not allowed to enter the promised land. Then, finally, when they believed him, they were allowed to enter with Joshua. Then later, they worshipped other gods. God removed them from the promised land. Then, when they turned back to the Lord their God, they were brought back into the promised land. Then, when they rejected Jesus Christ, they were removed and scattered from the promised land. And then in 1948, they all believed on Jesus Christ, and then they got put back in the promised land. Is that what happened? No. They still don't believe in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, but he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. See, the unsaved unbelievers that populate the nation of Israel, which is 99% of them, God's wrath is abiding on them, not God's blessing, not the blessing of God, the wrath of God. And not only that, but they're not even Jews. They say they're Jews, but are not, but do lie. The Bible says they're the synagogue of Satan, who is a liar, but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. He said, if you don't have the Son, you don't have the Father. And so the so-called nation of Israel is a fraud. 
started in 1948 by the Satanic United Nations, by the House of Rothschild. That wasn't God that put them in the Promised Land because God did not allow them to enter the Promised Land because of unbelief. And they are still in unbelief to this day. And they were not put there by God. They were put there by Satan because that will be the seat of the Antichrist government. So don't be fooled by this talk about Israel and the Jews being God's chosen people. Christians are God's chosen people. That's why the word elect, every time it's used in the New Testament, is referring to the believers, not referring to the nation of Israel. Because in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile.